So in the last video, we have seen how to create a user-defined function. In this video, we'll, we'll create a user-defined function, but to add two numbers. So let's, let's do it. So, okay. Now to add two numbers, we can directly create two variables here, and then we can, you know, add those values and we can print. But just to demonstrate, so whenever you, when you talk about any programming language, maybe a C programming in future, if you will learn C++ or in future, you will learn Java. So in all these languages, one thing is very common. When you want to do, when you, whenever you want to achieve a task, you have to break down that task into multiple subtasks. And for every subtask, create a block. Okay. And those blocks in C are called as functions. Now there's one more advantage of using functions. So let's say you want to achieve, you want to, uh, you know, you want to execute a set of statements multiple times. So instead of writing those statements multiple times, you can, you know, take, you can take out that uh, multiple functions in one block and you can call that block multiple times. So that will be easier, right? So that's why we have to always use functions. So in future, whenever you make a software or a code in C, make sure you use some, some kind of functions, okay? Either inbuilt functions or create that function by yourself. So here, we'll add two numbers and we'll use our own function to add those two values. So we'll create a method or a function called as add and this add will add two numbers. But this will either return something or it will not return something. So let's say we, we are not returning any value. But as we know, we have to follow this six, uh, three steps. So first we have to declare that, that function which is add. Then we have to define it. We have defined it here. But what we do here is we have to Take two values, one is i, int i, and then we'll say i is 5, then we'll say j is equal to 4, so we have two values, and let's add these two values, we'll say int uh, k equal to i plus j, and afterwards let's print this value, so we'll say print f, and we'll print, we'll say uh, answer is, we'll say percent d and comma will mention k this is how we print values right and now just to print this uh, we'll call add so we need to also call a function now if you run this code you can see we are we are getting an answer which is 9 answer is 9 okay let me print out no line new line oh. so answer is 9 simple now, uh, instead of printing the answer in this method or function, what we can do is, example, when you ask someone to add two values, let's say you got a customer, he says, I want, let's say you go to a restaurant and not restaurant, maybe a shop, and you will ask a manager or the person sitting on the, uh, sitting, on, sitting in front, you will ask, I want uh, maybe one kg rice. So he will ask his uh, one of the employee who is working there to give give you the rice, and then that employee will you know wrap up those rice packet, and the person you ask to will give you the packet, not the person who have packed the packet. So you are asking main to add two values. Main is asking add to add those two values, and then add is printing the value. Why add should print the value? You should print your main function should print the value, right? So main function will say, okay, you give me the output, I will print it. So I will say, I will create a, a variable called as answer and you give me the value. But answer will say, add will say, okay, I'm not, currently I'm not giving you the value, I'm just printing it. So if you want the value, I will give you, give you the value, I will not print it here. So when you return something, you have to say, you have to mention the return type there, which is int in this case. And to return something, we have to say return k. So we are returning the value, we are not printing here to here. And for add, it will return a value which is of type int, and we'll say this is as answer. Now, since we are changing definition and calling, we also change the declaration which is of type int here. And so that's it. Now let's print the value of answer here. So we'll say answer is percent d. We'll also use slash n, comma a n s. Let's give a semicolon. And now if you run this, you'll be getting the same output. But difference is this time you are not printing directly, you are returning the value to the main function. Cool. But hold on, you're assigning value in add, right? Let's say I want to pass these values from main. So to pass this value from main, you have to pass those values in add function. You can pass values inside a function by using this round brackets. So this those 
values when, which you pass in a method is, they are called as parameters. So let's say I am passing 5 and 4. Now since you are passing some values, we need to also accept those values. So here we have to specify, we are taking a value which is int i comma int j. So this 5 will be coming in i and this 4 will be coming in this j. Now since we are de declaring those variables here, we don't have to declare it here. Okay. <clears throat> now since you are changing your definition and calling, you have to even change your declarations. So you have to say int comma int. No need to mention a variable name there. Okay, we just have to specify the type of variables you are having. So I'm using two int variables. So we have to just mention int and int. Cool. If you run this now, here we go. That's the answer. Answer is nine. So if I change this value to nine, so five and nine, we'll be getting fourteen. And yeah, that's your answer there. That is fourteen. So that's how you have to call a function which will return your value. But that's it from this video. In the next video, we'll talk about recursion. So recursion, yeah, recursion.